Okay, this is going to be my third video on DNS. In the previous videos, we looked at DNS, the protocol, and how it works and what it does. We also did some Wireshark packet captures to get a closer look and take apart the packets on a DNS request and look at the header and the application layer data. So in this video, we're going to use some name server tools to uh, make some name requests. And we're going to use NSLOOKUP, DIG, and HOST. So first, let's talk about NSLOOKUP. So with NSLOOKUP, you type NSLOOKUP and then the domain name you want to resolve. And then by default, it's going to use whatever name server you have configured on your host. So right now, my name server on my host is my local router. So it'll use my name server to resolve a name to an address. But you can just type in NSLOOKUP and then you could set the type of record you want to look up. You can also use different servers to do the DNS request. So if I don't want to use my configured DNS server and I want to use some other DNS server like my service providers or maybe Google's DNS server or some public DNS server out there, I could change the server that's doing the looking up. And then I have here, you could also set things like uh, no recursion to so that you're not doing a recursive request, you're doing it maybe an iterative request. Um, there's other settings that you can look up to change what how it works, but let's just look at it really quickly. Oh, and here's the different record types that you can um, request, the different resource records. So first of all, we'll just say NS lookup. The basic command is that, and then you feed it a domain name that you want to look up. So I'll put in my website domain name, and it uses my DNS server on my host that's set, and it looks up this name, and it gets this address record. It's non-authoritative because it's not the authoritative DNS server that uh, return the information. All right, so then if you want to do something fancier, you type in NSLOOKUP. You don't feed it a domain name. You just hit enter, and now you're in the program. You can see I have an NSLOOKUP prompt here. And now I can um, set different requests. So I could say set type equal to name server, NS. So now if I set the record type to NS, now when I put in a request, I'll get name server records. So name server records for different um, names. So now I'll put in danscourses.com and it'll return my DNS servers for my domain. So danscourses.com has by default two name servers and you can see here ns1.m03.siteground.biz and ns2. And you can see this, the reason is, is that my, my website is hosted by SiteGround so the name servers are also hosted by SiteGround. If I want to see the mail records for, uh, for the mail servers for my website, for my domain, I could say set type equal to MX and look up the MX records. And we'll just put in the same domain here. And now I get mail records. So non-authoritative answer, this name resolves to these mail exchangers mx10.mailspamprotection.com, mx30, mx20. So these are the mail servers. You can see they've got spam protection on them. And, uh, and then also it, re it resolved the name servers here. So additional information right here. And there's the name servers, the name server names. And then this is the host name server names to address records. So then the next thing you could do is you could change the the server. So let's do that. I'll grab this one right here. This is my name server for my site. And I'll say server. And then I'll just paste that in there and then hit enter. And so now the server that's going to be doing the requesting is my DNS server. And so now if I ask for let's let's set the type first, set type back to a record and then put in the request it returns you can see it doesn't say non-authoritative answer I get the same address record for the domain name but the server that made the request was this DNS server and it doesn't say non-authoritative because the request was directly from from the name server for my domain I could also set the type let's see here, equal to start of authority record to get all of the information
for that zone. So let's see here. Um, and then we'll put it in here. And then you get the name server, the mail server, and then you get the settings, the time to live, refresh rates for the names, how long they'll be cached. And then also here I've got, once again, the name server and then the addresses for the name server. All right, so that is NS Lookup. So I'll quit out and I'm done with that. So now let's go and take a look at the dig command. To use the dig command, I'm going to use Linux and we'll scroll down here. We're going to use, we're going to put in some commands here. And the first command that we're going to put in, it's pretty interesting, is that if we just type in dig, so I'll type in dig and hit enter, with no domain name provided, it'll show us the root DNS servers on the internet. So here's the A root server, D, I, L, you see all these root servers here, and then it gives you pretty good information. You've got the header, you can see the the opcode, these are the flags in the header. You can see, the, so this is the, the header section of the request, of the DNS uh, request. And okay, what else? This is the question section. It was a name server request. Um, and then here's the answer with the 13 root DNS servers on the internet. So that's pretty interesting. Now, the other thing that you could do is is you can say, so there's 13 root DNS servers on the internet. There's actually more than 13 um, because of load distribution and any cast addressing. In other words, multiple servers can have the same address. So, um, so there's not a bottleneck to just only 13 root DNS servers in the world. There's also root DNS servers um, with IPv4 and IPv6. And we can see it, we can see that if we type dig and then put in at and I'll put in the address of my DNS server. And my local DNS server uh, is 192.168.8.1, which is my router. And I won't provide a DNS name. So no DNS name. I just say, hey, dig command, but then using this DNS server. And if you do that, you get more information. So now the top part is the same. There's the root DNS servers. And then here is the additional section you can see here the root DNS servers resolved with these IPv4 addresses, and then some of the root DNS servers with their um, quad A records, this is their IPv6 addresses. And I thought I would get more information from that. There we go. There's more information. There's the A records, and then all of those root DNS servers, the 13 root DNS servers, but also quad A records for IPv6. So the 13 root DNS servers, are um, dual stack, both IPv4 and IPv6. That's pretty good. So then the other type of things that you can do is you could put in a dig command and then just put the domain name you want to resolve. Um, here we go. Put in my website and it returns, it basically says, uh, I like it because the formatting is more of, uh, shows you the actual formatting of the application layer protocol. You have the header, and then you have the question section, and then you have the answer section. You can see here this name, internet class, a record, and then the IPv4 address for um, this record, this address record for that name. So that's pretty cool. The other thing you can do, which is pretty interesting, is that there's actually, and I learned this from a great book on DNS, and that is that there is actually an example dot com domain that you can play with to test out these commands and see how they work. There we go, www.example.com and I get the reply and I can get more information for it if I feed it my DNS server information in front of it. I get more information. I get the um, question, the answer, and extra information. Let's see here, yep, that had the three W's. And then I could also do, if I want, I could do a reverse query. For a reverse query, you just type dig and then dash X and then you reply, uh, you give it the IP address. So let's say I was to give it this IP address. And then uh, we'll feed that in there. And then put the dig, this is a reverse query. So you can see here, there's the IP address in reverse, listed in reverse, and we get the we want the pointer record for that. 
and it didn't really return the information I was hoping for. Let's see here. Um, maybe I'll And there we go. So nope, that didn't give me the A record. It just returned um, the address. So, oh well, not so fancy there. Um, but anyway, reverse queries, I'm gonna have to play with that some more. So then the other thing you can do is you could put in a host command and a host command is even easier. Host command, just say, type host and then the, the name you're interested in. So let's say I wanna look up cisco.com. I type host and cisco.com. It gives me the IP address, the IPv6 address, and then the mail records here. And I could say, all right, let's say host give me dash A, give me all of the information. And I get the MX records here and the address records here. And this is the same format it looks like to me as a DNS request with the different sections, a lot more like the dig command. Um, you can pass it verbosity. Um, non-recursive queries and then with a capital T you could ask for a uh, TCP zone transfer. So there are three commands to make name requests, host command, dig, and NS lookup.